These noisy yellow-headed parrots are in decline. Their colorful feathers and their ability to imitate human speech make them a target for poachers in the illegal pet trade. Add to that the threat of the loss of their habitats and nests, these birds are now endangered with over 90% of the species' numbers having disappeared from its home range in the last two decades. But in Belize, this bird, while isolated and threatened, can still be found. Deforestation and uh, habitat loss, illegal logging, illegal poaching and predation, natural predation. They're the main threats that the parrots face. Um, the, the things we're doing to redress that, we're working with other organizations in conservation projects, nest monitoring, um, and we raise, hand raise baby birds and then put them back when they may not otherwise have survived. The only bird that we really know for sure what's going on with is the yellowhead parrot. It's the one that everybody wants as a pet, it's the one that talks really well. It's only found in Belize. It's a unique subspecies here in Belize. And in the 1990s, there were 70,000 of them. Now there's 1,200, 1,200, that's it. Back in 2004, Nikki Buxton opened this bird sanctuary called Belize Bird Rescue. She started the BBR to help the yellow-headed parrot transition from captivity to the wild. It is a program that is supported by the forestry department. We discovered that there was an issue with parrots being in captivity and the, um, it's actually against the law to have them in captivity and yet there was nothing that in place for the government to be able to use to put those parrots back into the wild, which would have been the perfect situation for any captive parrot. The majority of the birds that we have here are the long-term parrot rehab. The challenge with the parrots is when they come in, they are usually clipped. People get the scissors and cut the wings so they can't fly away. And that takes about 18 months to two years to regenerate. And so we have to keep them safe during that period. If, if they got out, they wouldn't survive the predators. So we work very hard to keep the yellowhead habitat um, safe and to put back as many yellowheads as we can. So far, we've released 102 back into the population, which is a pretty good chunk of 1,200. But the Belize Bird Rescue would soon find out that there were many birds in Belize that needed urgent help. So they now work with just about every species of birds. The BBR takes in birds that have been confiscated, surrendered, or injured, or sick. The Forest Department will either bring confiscated or surrendered ex-pets or um, birds that they've removed from poachers. We have people who have pets in captivity that realize that it's actually a problem to have them and they really don't know what to do with them anymore, so they bring them to us. So surrenders, confiscations, injuries, orphan birds, birds that have fallen from nests. And also we hand raise birds that have been put, um, brought out of the, um, the nesting sites by the rangers when they are in trouble in the nest. When an injured bird is taken in at the Belize Bird Rescue, it is assessed and housed accordingly. The vet would work with the bird to provide medication and in some cases surgeries and other medical procedures would need to be done. The bird remains with the BBR where it receives food and care and eventually is prepared to be released back into the wild. Sometimes some birds are in really bad shape and they need to be rehabilitated for years before they can go back to the forest. In some extreme cases, some birds can't go back to their home and so they must stay and live at the BBR where they are cared for. Amongst the parrots, it's the issue with people removing them from the nests and having them in captivity in bad conditions. With the other species, I would say primarily it's uh, probably half being injured by humans either on purpose with slingshots or by with a vehicle or something by accident. Or if they've come in from a migration, they get sick, um, they get parasites, injuries, things like that. While Nikki considers Belize as a haven for birds, she also sees the threats to these animals. We're seeing an increase in the number of um, uh, corn crops and cane crops and the problem with those is that they're using big machinery now which means they have to clear massive areas. Um, there's no buffers being left between fields anymore. The fields are becoming hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of acres and it's way too much. The, the, the birds won't cross them, the animals won't cross them. So they're not just losing habitat, they're losing a food source. We're imbalancing the whole ecosystem. And also creating monocultures is causing disease. It's not a healthy environment for humans or for, for animals, to be quite honest. Caring for these birds come naturally to Nikki and the team at BBR. They also know that there is a bigger impact 
In recent years, Belize has been growing as a birding destination. Just last year alone, 30,000 tourists came to Belize to do birding. So to have healthy birds and a variety of species in Belize adds to the birding experience. We're getting a huge community of birders in this country and some of them are absolutely world class. They, um, they're bringing a lot of tourists here. The tourists are coming to see the birds. They want to see the iconic ones, the toucan, the national bird, the parrots, the big eagles and things like that. But also our, um, our habitat here for migrants is crucial to keep that, um, that connectivity going between, I mean, these birds fly thousands and thousands of miles every single year. They'll go off to breed in the north and then they'll come back to winter down south. And if we don't maintain this habitat for them, it messes up everything. To date, the BBR has more than 150 birds. Every morning, the team prepares breakfast for these birds by cutting fruits and vegetables served with seeds in about 60 containers. They are fed and the sick birds get their daily meds. But to run this nonprofit organization also takes $170,000 a year. So the BBR depends on donations and other forms of funding okay. to support the medical, so food, transport, so wages, and other here. needs. So you can help to take care of these birds by donating money, your time, or even food. We love uh, donations of food supplies. We use, um, we use eight coconuts a day. That's a lot when it adds up over the year. We um, two sacks of corn a week, two sacks of sunflower seeds a week. We make cake for them. Um, we bake eggs for them, um, carrots, pumpkin, any kind of vegetables, any kind of fruits. If you have a, a farm or a, a market stall and you have stuff left over, give us a call. We can come get it within reason if it's in Bama Pan. Right? Reporting for News 5, I'm Andrea Palanco.